There's one in every movie. The actor whose performance stands out. The one who you walk away talking about even if they're only on screen for a few minutes. This season on Carpetbagger, we're going to be talking to the scene stealers of the year's best movies. So we're here at the 21 Club, the historic former speakeasy that once housed Ernest Hemingway's private wine collection, to talk with Corey Stoll, the young actor who plays Hemingway himself in Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris. No subject is terrible if the story is true, if the prose is clean and honest, and if it affirms courage and grace under pressure. You didn't even know that you were coming in to, to read for Hemingway. You just thought, oh, I'm going to have a nice chat with Woody Allen. Like, you hear the stories of what his auditions are like, and it's like he's hiding behind a pillow and sort of looks you up and down and he says, okay, you know, thank you, nice to meet you. I just showed up, there was no script, there was no sense of what the part was and, and we just talked for a little bit and then he handed me the, the pages and it was Hemingway, it was like this two-page monologue. You're too self-effacing, it's not manly. If you're a writer, Declare yourself the best writer, but you're not as long as I'm around, unless you want to put the gloves on and settle it. Some of the role is the audience's perception of Hemingway, because yeah, we're expecting a certain kind of do. character, yes. and then here you appear mm -hmm. with that brusque delivery and that very manly stare. Yeah. You just unspool these mm -hmm. lines, and you're so deadpan in doing it. That's sort of where the comedy is, too. The sort of unnaturally long sentences that go on and on. I drank some water, and then we took a cab, and then I did my laundry, and then I brushed my teeth. Oh, it, it just keeps on going. You want to start doing it now, don't you? You want to go into that voice. When the man who is brave and true looks death squarely in the face like some rhino hunters I know, or Belmonte, who's truly brave, it is because they love with sufficient passion to push death out of their minds until it returns as it does to all men. And then you must make really good love again. Think about it. How many times did you have to do that? How many takes did that take? He doesn't let you do that many. It's just so terrifying because, you know, it doesn't matter what your performance is gonna be. Like you, whatever, you have to be prepared for whatever you do to be, you know, enshrined in film history forever because it's a Woody Allen movie. And, you know, they may not take that take that you thought what you were great in because some extra was picking their nose. Have you ever shot a charging lion? Since the movie has come out, you've become so identified with Hemingway that people now ask you to do Hemingway-related things, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm going to start doing bar mitzvahs. So. <laughs> Kids in the ears. <laughs> Kids in the ears. I would love that. <laughs> if someone had like a, a bullfighting theme, <laughs> Kids in the ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. No, I, you know, I could just, I could just coast on this for the rest of my life. <laughs>